to get with the programming I'm chasing him. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Flat Stanley. Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> the Bill Grunler frozen thumbnail from Around the Whiteboard yesterday. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, get with the programming is 0 for 2. God. Yeah. Well, I guess I got my first one, but I, I lost the second one. Yeah. It, it was a... Uh, it's a good show. It's a good show. I, no, it was oh. a good show. Um, you know what's crazy is uh, the... Because of the condensed time frame that you mm-hmm. have to speak... Mm-hmm. Like you get the question, and it's like, fuck, there's a lot of there's a lot I could talk about on this, so what do I choose? Yeah. And so like the whole discussion, like when Pat said, Oh, Bill's wrong, which I was like, I was like, Oh, okay, we're coming out like that. Like, Ooh, quiet yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna grab you by your fucking chest hair, and throw your ass to the ground. We think about that. Um the uh the competition thing, like I I I really honestly believe that yes it's a platform but like people i don't think we get people because of the games it's spark it's like oh well, look at that cool thing you know mm-hmm. so i really think i really that 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 topic that question yeah um i think would be a really fun topic to just yeah. air out whether it's like on you know seven show or even our show or whatever just to talk about because i think it's a there's a lot that, of yeah, talk about it you know well that's the challenging thing in that format is that you got 60 seconds and i love the truncated window like it's the, the best like the filibustering show like <laughs> just well, that that's why our is 35 make, minutes and Sevon's is two hours and 35 yeah, minutes it's like can you make a concise direct point it's almost like coaching yeah right? it's like coaching cues yeah clear actionable coaching cues so yeah. uh if you guys know what we're talking about is the around the whiteboard is the uh pedro's show of coffee pods and wands and uh, for some reason, uh, as a, out of disrespect to Bill, that he still has the Bella Martin, uh, Lucy Campbell, and John Singleton episode uh, on there. I guess he just doesn't know how to use a YouTube channel. But uh, Bill's is right there. And then you have, uh, <laughs> it looks like, I want to say, Taylor Trump. Like if Donald Trump was just an angrier, <laughs> redheaded person, <laughs> it would be Taylor <laughs> But uh, it's been a good show. It's been a good show. I think uh, Hiller is in like the super finals. And then uh, who won last week or yesterday? Was it Pat? Pat won, yeah. By 0.5. By 0.5, yes. Oh, yes, the half points. (laughs) The wonderful half points. But uh, yeah, it was a good show. So good job. That was your first kind of game show, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hard. Dude, it was, it was legitimately Dude, like hard it is hard <laughs> well, did you get like uh like nervous like excited nervous as you, you know you're going around it's like okay my turn's coming yeah uh, you see the clock yeah i would get nervous too it's fun yeah, yeah well and it was the uh like i was watching the clock so i'm like okay i gotta make sure i can get this stuff in you know you have the things that you want to say and what's what's hard is if if at any point you start to deviate like one sentence will deviate your entire thing that you had that you were going to say in one minute mm. and trying to reorganize that is rough. You know, trying to figure out what you want. It's, it was, it was tough. Well, Tommy, that's so false because Bella is better looking than all you know. Uh, I'll, I'll, please, I'll speak for myself. Bro. No yeah. shit. Please. I'll stand alone in that fucking category. Please. <laughs> Barclay. Uh, it's, Bill was thrown off with the inability to give tactile cues. That's yesterday. probably, yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. But uh, yeah, it was a good show. If you guys haven't it's seen that, fun. go to Coffee Pods and Wads. Uh, the format is is good. And um, I got you know what's great, dude? Pedro's getting better. Like every show, he's getting better. Getting better and better. It's yeah. really, it's really cool. It was good. He, like it, the time's getting more truncated. I think your show is 34 minutes, which is about yeah. perfect for something like that. Totally. And, uh, I think the first one was an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. um, but the next thing I wanted to share, and if you guys haven't seen this yet, but uh, we got a Christmas present from the Savon podcast and the trailer for said podcast actually dropped and uh i'm gonna risk getting a strike on our youtube channel to uh plug that.
A short ass cameraman going above and beyond? I knew in a moment it must be Savan. Good. What about the cam? Let's flip, let's flip the whole thing no. around. No? Okay. And more rapid than eagles, his team all came as he shouted on Souza in each member's name. She told you to put your big boy panties on and go talk to her. Really? Yeah. She asked if you were scared of her. What did she tell her? Probably. <laughs> and so to their cameras, his team soon flew with hard drives full of space. And Savan did too. My brother told me, he asked Mariah, yeah. like, are you here because Savan doesn't dare to come here? And she said, yes. But I just went over there and I bought some big boy panties. Oh, nice. Yeah, just, you need those. And I just put them on. Good. Yeah, go find someone else to bother now. <laughs> Down the stadium steps he came with a leap and a bound. He was dressed in his jorts and his man bun was round. Whoever cuts his man bun off first, you'd see all these people converging on him. He spoke endless words and went straight to his work, reminding the athletes that he wasn't a jerk. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see the man behind the fucking camera. So silly. This is the quietest you've ever been. I grabbed my butt yesterday. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. He's just standing there filming. I'm just holding him. And he's not even breaking camera. I'm trying to get myself into the fight, so on. Yeah. A push on record into the brief he goes, then giving a nod up the stairway hey, he Savan, rose. That's what was missing last couple of years. Like, warm up here and behind the scenes, so yeah. Brother, super, super nice to meet you. I heard him exclaim as he rode out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Holding this big head is really, I'm very proud of it. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you nailed it. I actually don't feel any... People are like, oh, I feel so humbled by it. I don't feel humbled by it. I feel proud. Like, I worked so hard the last two years. I didn't know what the outcome would be. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be, um, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But I'm very proud of the outcome. Good stuff. I love when he tries to sound humble like that. Yeah, so full of Humble? Sh- no, fuck no, I'm not humble. <laughs> like the most authentic version. Uh, uh, so my, my favorite part about that ending when he's just, he's like, getting asked this question, like in the middle of answering the question, not even breaking the sentence, he just like goes back to work. Like he sees something and just naturally is like, I'm going to put my can over there. Yeah. Like I was like, Oh gosh, that is, that is so that's uh, it's coming in January, 15 episodes. I've heard about 14 hours of uh, content. It's going to be insane. And I think if you become a member uh, on his YouTube channel, they, they have these new memberships now, which we need to do, but yeah. Um, we just need to give you guys something for it <laughs> is that you'll get, uh, I think early access to some of the, those videos each time. Oh, that'd be cool. I believe that is, that is a part of it. But, uh, yeah, so that was a, uh, early Christmas present or late, depending on who you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's from the games, but, uh, that came out, I think what Christmas Eve, uh, speaking of, before we get to our topic of the day, which will be, uh, I think a really fun conversation actually. Yeah. Um, how uh how was your christmas uh it was great um it's always it's always unique Mm. um because you know i'm single dad and so you get your kids at random times or whatever so uh i had joe on at noon on christmas day and actually she just uh mom picked her up just like at noon today so i've had her this whole time so we had a blast and the the nice thing about it like i i think that it's for all those divorced parents out there um know know this game that like for some people they do it where you alternate so like one yeah. christmas one year you get them for oh, christmas yeah. and you can kind of enjoy that time and the next time you don't have them for christmas and there's like you know they fit some other days in there whatever um but other families will do it where they split the day and as much as I would love to have the build up the Christmas Eve, all that kind of stuff, I would rather have the day of at noon, like we have it, mm. because then we get to do our Christmas and we just get to chill. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, like Christmas Day, you just want to kind of like piddle around with your things and drink hot chocolate and whatever the dinner is and watch the last couple movies that you're going to watch for the year and like that kind of stuff and just chill out. Yeah. Not rush to get all your presents open, try them out real fast and have to pack real fast because you're going to be moving. So, uh, but other than that, dude, it was great. And I, I, this kills me every single time. 
the as a parent, you you figure out what what's that toy that what's that thing that they want? Oh, you know, what's Santa yeah, yeah. gonna give them? That big, you know, the, yeah, the, the cool the cool thing. <clears throat> so Santa knows that my daughter loves to sing and she sings all the time, nonstop. Doesn't matter if she's doing homework, she's singing. If she's taking a shower, she's singing. If she's going to the bathroom, she's singing. If she's singing, she's singing. So um, I wanted to be able to get her, or, or, or I told Santa, I'm like, hey, this is what we need to do. You need to get her a, a good microphone, like microphone like this, that she Ooh, can hook yeah, up to yeah. her iPad so she can record herself and, and you know, stick her headphones to it. And like, okay. so she's got a monitor and the headphones and all that. Did all this stuff. So Santa set it up, did everything, um, this amazing setup, which yeah. takes a lot when you try to hook it into an iPad. I'm going to tell you that right now. Me and Santa <laughs> had to do a lot of fucking research to figure out what that was. <laughs> One of the other presents that she got was this thing called a box Bella. Have you ever heard of that? Is this like, um, no, we have a, like a Tony. Uh, what? <laughs> it's like this little cube <laughs> and... It's a, it's a, it's a radio, it's a sound box. It's this cube. And I think it's, I think it's called a Tony and you get like characters from like Disney's or other cartoons oh. and you put it on top and it just like plays music. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this isn't that this is, if you look on YouTube, in fact, I, I bought it off of, uh, of, uh, Instagram, I think. Oh. Um, and it's a thing, it's a headband. It's a headband that has like this little elastic string with a ball on the end. Okay. And you box this ball. And so oh, you have Lord. one, two, and see how many times it's like a human version of like the paddle, the ball mm -hmm. and paddle thing that like old people used to have, like myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, well, I just, I just thought it was something silly, something fun to kind of bat around, whatever. Did she suck? She tried it with on it on her head. Couldn't really get that. Like uh -huh. was having a hard time, sort of doing it, but like couldn't find the height and whatever. She stuck it to the ceiling, and then literally for hours. <laughs> batted that thing around dude hours <laughs> didn't fucking pick up the microphone that santa brought the 20 fucking doll little bat 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 santa this and the whole roadie crew that had to assemble this, yes this, this microphone and we're, we're gathering all this, lots of ball hanging from a string <laughs> we, we gathered all this stuff of like hey like you know what do you want to you know what do you want to take when you go back to mom's house you know do you want to take any stuff you want to leave it here and she's like well i have to bring my ball because that's the best ball ever that's so, and i've got to be putting like Twenty fucking dollars. Isn't that what always happens, right? Every like time, the dumbest, cheapest thing you could get tends to be the best one, and you spent like whatever amount of time and money on this other thing. I, 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 dude, every single time. So all the parents out there that always get stressed out know that that will happen every single fucking year. And what zombie? To your point right here. Um. Yeah. The that's what you got, right? That was a Christmas present you got. That was what I got. Uh, last Christmas. Yeah. You want to know what my daughter got me for this Christmas? I was going to ask, what what is the gift this year that you uh, that you loved? It was yeah. a Baby Yoda single waffle maker. Oh, dude! Like single serve waffle, waffle, and like so we had waffles, dude, every day. Little Baby Yoda waffles, little ears, and the little floating ball. I like it. And she got me a big old mug, so I'm like, dude, my daughter knows me. That's good. It was good. That's really good. Yours? How was it? Uh, Santa. <clears throat> so Dylan asked Santa for a race track, like a oh pit crew girl, huh? Matchbox, or, or matchbox car race track. Yeah. So Santa got this like four looped speed power thing. Oh, dude. Oh yeah. And <laughs> it was, <laughs> no, not the hand crank, like the ones that uh, it's, it's it's it looks like a four leaf clover. Okay. And and it's a track. And it's for a matchbox car, but it has these this thing in the middle that basically like shoots them through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And okay. like the only could figure out like how many he could get. I think he got up to like five or six cars mm. just looping through this thing. It got really freaking old, really freaking fast because it's like <laughs> <laughs> just, just like right. <laughs> but he loved it. And then Blake got her big girl bike. Oh dang. Got How's she riding on that? Good. Uh, we haven't put her on it yet. She's really so she uh, Dylan and Blake both started on um striders. Yeah. Right? And I just from my experience, striders into a regular bike is the fastest transition rather than training wheels and taking the training wheels Dude, on. Dude, 100%. Why did they not I'm, have those when we were kids? What the hell? Right. Like I remember training wheel like on a bike I would just lean 
into my wheels and then we took them off. I'm like, I have no balance because I just rested on my wheels. And what we found was the combo of, they both have big wheels as well. Oh, yeah. So the balance they learned from the strider and then how to pedal on the big wheel. And then you just put them together. And like Dylan picked up riding a bike in 10 minutes. Dude, that's so wild. Wild. nuts. Um, yeah, that strider, uh, my brother, uh, his son, Luke has one of those. Yeah. And he's already, he's two, he's like two and a half now. He rides it at the, uh, the skate park, kind of like seven wow. kids. He's like, yeah. he's dropping in on those things. And it's like, wow, that's yeah. badass. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But, um, all right. Hey, let's talk shop. Let's do it. Let's talk shop before you guys do anything though. If you, if you need a Christmas gift belated or an open gift coming up, go to element26.co. It's all the gear, everything you need, thumb tape, grip, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, weight belts. Uh, I just got word that new grips, not even on the site yet, been designed, made, and may be coming soon. Those, so those guys are, I feel like they're on the uh, research and development yeah. Every like quarter, they get a new kind of yeah. of, uh, of grip. So be on the lookout. So so maybe don't buy the grips yet. Maybe wait till January. I, I heard whispers at January, brand new designed grips right in time for the open is uh, coming down the pipeline. But uh, if you do go to element26.co, make sure you use the code GWTP15 for 15% off. Uh, and as Halpin said, is uh, his favorite knee sleeves. And Judy... Uh, if you need them, you know where to go and you know how to get them for cheap. All right. The debate begins, Bill. How did this even get sparked, by the way? Um, I think one of the questions, uh, it, it, I well, we, talk, we, we like talked com. about it for a while. Yeah. It, it, yeah. There was a couple, there were a couple dot com and cap copies that popped up. Yes. Um, well, I, well, I'll even go further back than that. How many? Uh, Cap's been going around what a year and a half now? Two years? Mm, three? Three years now? At yeah. least two. But I think going on three. And for the like, as far as like people who've talked to Cat, like we have had two big shows with all those guys. Yeah. Over the yeah. last couple of years, like when it first yeah. came yeah. out, we had them on the show. It was James Austin and Spencer Hendel, and then we had uh, I think it was Austin and James. We've had them on twice yeah. already on this show. Yeah. And, and the idea was, you know, with all of the other uh, programs and camps and names and people putting out templated programs, that was CrossFit's first attempt at doing like, well, if everyone else is going to do that, okay, here's here's something we can do. And there was the idea of it being a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. um, that went, it was supposed to be free for a while. And then it went to a paid uh, program. And then some time went by and then they decided that like, okay, this is going to be one of the things that they add as an affiliate tool. It's like, here you have this, this, this program. Yep. Um, then it was, then we started seeing some of like the, the, the waving back and forth where there were a couple cap and dot com were the same workout. And that kind of, at least within our little chat that started a like, well, what the, a why there was a why. I guess mine was more yeah, of a we found out why. Why. mine was more of a why. <clears throat> um, uh, and I think that's where it started from. And then, you know, we got the question on um, the around the, the, the whiteboard yesterday, which was mm -hmm. should cap be should cap and dot com be the same thing? And I think that's kind of where it started from was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe we need to, talk. I mean, it's programming. So we need to talk about the program. We've talked about what dot com <laughs> is when we've had all the guest programmers come in the mm -hmm. programming into the ether, the programming, not for anyone specific, but everyone at the same time, you know, holding true to the true values of what CrossFit is, the constantly varied functional movements done at high intensity, the, um, you know, moving large loads, long distances quickly, all of the things. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden we have CAP, which is a templated program that is designed to help. I mean, I, I would, I would say like my, my take on that in the, at the show yesterday was dot com was for the individual and CAP is for the head coach or the business. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, again, it was, it was hard to, 
Pat, Pat said a comment where it was like, you know, there's a lot of people that can take a, a program that don't, that doesn't know shit about. I think, I think I said, if you can't program for your gym, you shouldn't be a coach. Is what I said. What I meant was <laughs> head coach. Got it. What I, not, not like your coaching staff. I mean, yeah. not everyone's going to, I'm, I'm talking about the coach. Right. Not the rest of your assistants. So, yeah. um, but I think like, that's what I think. I mean, that, that one is for the business side uh -huh. and one is for the individual side. I mean, uh, the goal I don't think in cap is for the individual. It's to allow more time for the coach and for the business owner, I guess, especially if they're, if they're, mm -hmm. if you have a, if you have a small team, if you have a small team, <laughs> um, to free up some time so you don't have to program. I mean, you know how long programming takes. Yeah. Plus, we're nerds about it. So if I can take extra long, cause we're right. like, it's like loving this and loving that, you know? So yeah. So well, that's and, where it started. Yeah. And so part of this debate is we would like to walk people through the challenges, the differences between the two, our preferences as an affiliate owner, um, options if you are an affiliate owner and don't want to be the programmer or have that. And uh, and it's not just cap, right? It's it's all these affiliate programs out Sub there. So, yeah, that's and I won't even get into too much detail about most of those, but. The thing with CAP, if you guys aren't aware, is that it isn't exactly expressed for the individual like .com. And I think that is a good differentiate, uh, like the difference that you put out there. I like that. Uh, CAP is designed, I would say, more friendly for affiliates, top to bottom, based off movements program, length of the, the actual workout. But the biggest part about CAP, if you guys don't know about it, is that the amount of information and details and stimulus achieved and scaling options and modifications and lesson plans, the amount of detail that comes with every single workout, every single workout of the day comes with a four minute explanation video, every workout, every day. Every week has a week video of the overview of the week. Every month, there's a video of the overview of the month, not to mention every single thing you get every single day. And it is geared to actually help develop coaches, the coaching staff, and educate programmers. The workout's the workout. Right? And, and we know this, right? The, there is nothing inherently special about one program or the other. It's all CrossFit. Now, it's, it's how you apply it, right? How you piece the puzzles together. But at the end of the day, there's there's not like we always say there's not the perfect program. There's bad ones out there for sure. Yeah. But I think the information that comes with CAP is is huge, right? And so that that leads me to my here's my stance on it, right? This isn't going to be like a marathon episode. My stance is I will always encourage an affiliate owner to program for their affiliate themselves or have someone on your staff that does that because nobody knows what your athletes need better than you. Whether you're the owner or the head programmer and you're there every day, you know who's coming in the gym, you know what they need as a total group, you can scale it individually way easier. I will always advocate for someone to do in-house programming themselves over anything, anything out there. There is nothing better than doing in-house programming for your affiliate. That being said, if you're a shitty programmer, then we can start talking about maybe doing some outsourcing. But right off the bat, and that'll be a part B we can talk about later, but my fir a firm belief is if you want to get the most out of your community and for them, programming for them is the first place to start. So I'm, all, I'm team in-house, like, without question. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, I, and I agree with that. And, and as a... Let's say you you are starting out your gym. You're starting from ground level. You know you have some people that you train with, or you have the ways that you work with whatever. One of the things that I think develops your community is that program is your workout. I mean, they're they're going to see it as like the you know the the community is built around your workout, but it's built around what you're designing. And mm -hmm. part of the re part of the thing that you're designing is and being the designer is you get to explain what that is. Now, yes, on cap, it'll say, here's the stimulus, here are the scales, here's this, here's this, that. And that's cool. I mean, like I, 
I like all the stuff that they have. I think it's great that they have that. Um, it would be worthless if they didn't include all of that stuff because then it's like, why even, why even put it out? It's there? Just it's be, right. right. It's like, it's, it's just a different dot com. Totally. Um, what up, Eaton? Hey, uh, cool. thanks for that. I, I, I do think it's important to have what I see cap as for those that either are not a, are, I, well, I don't want to say a bad programmer yet, is an inexperienced programmer. Yeah, novice. It, is if you look at that, you should be able it, it. I like the idea of taking it. Okay, now how do I make this mine? Mm -hmm. It's a tool. It's a tool. In fact, that when they have the cap, I mean, it isn't just the one workout. They also have, if you want a strength piece, here's a strength piece. Here's some accessory yes. things. I mean, they have right. all of the things in there. Not to say you need to do all of the things, but you can also pick and choose what you want to do out of that too. You can say, oh, all right, well, let me look at their, let me take their time frame. What do they do for the week on their time frame? All right, I'm going to build this one. I'm going to build this one. I'm going to build this one. I'm going to build this way. I mean, because if you're talking, if you want to be a coach, and one of the things that we as, you know, as CrossFit say, we have top level coaches. A top yeah. level coach isn't the person that just can say certain words. As a right. top level coach isn't someone that can pick the right playlist on the radio, on the, on the, on the iPad or whatever, and hit the three, two, one, go button on the clock or is technically sound with us. The coach is not only are they going to be able to give you all the right clues and well, in cues and, and fixes and modifications and scales, but then you, you go to the top level coach. They're the ones that's going to be programming that stuff out to be able to disseminate that to your group. So I, I, I mean, I love it as a tool, but I don't think it should be the same. I don't think that I do not like the idea that someone would be taking cap and not having anybody building their own prescription. You know what I mean? It's like if if we are the, you know, and Glassman used to say this all the time that like we're the doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're the we're the holistic doctors in our little med stop box over here. Right. What's the prescription that I'm giving them? Here's how you eat, here's how you move. Here's how I move correctly. And if you can't do those things, here's how I get you to move to, to move closer to those things. Well, am I just going like, okay, you feel like how? Let me look in this book. All right, take two of these, three of those, and four of those. Yeah. Am I a doctor? No. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 WebMD and I don't want to be WebMD. I want to be a badass coach. Mm. So I, I I like it as a tool. I really do, but I will always and I'll say this, if you are a, an affiliate owner or a, a, a head coach and you, you are outsourcing, whether it's, you know, to cap or to mayhem or to whatever the, the other programs that's out there, I hope that at some point you have someone that is at least experimenting with programming. I mean, design your, I mean, even, yeah. even when you're doing like, if you're doing coaches meetings or whatever, hey, what would you have come up for this week? Give me, give me a couple of workouts or do that. Have everyone bring like a workout each. So if you have five coaches, you get five, you get five workouts, you know, if you once a week or every two weeks, you get 10 workouts over the course of the month. So in a year's time, you're going to have a shit ton of workouts. You guys could all put together and you got a whole year of your programming. Well, I like what you put there because I, I want people to understand is that just as we, two things, everyone starts out as a bad coach and everybody starts out as a bad programmer. And it oh, requires God, yeah, trial, error, mistakes, lessons. Like the, the, the reason why I would argue is like the reason why I became such a good coach is that I was such a bad one. And at the same thing goes for programming. Yeah. Right? There, the, we all remember the week where we forgot that we're doing, uh, we did four shoulder to overhead workouts in, in five days. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, I didn't even think about looking at And so and we get this question a lot. It's like, oh, how do I get better at programming? What do I do is like, look at everything you can and understand and try to decipher where some of the patterns are going, how movements are put together, why they're put together, and just go out and make mistakes. Now, try not to do it with like 20 people, but you can be your own experiment. That's the coolest part of the affiliate is that you are your own human laboratory. Yeah. 
You can start there, but just start. And I, and I believe, and this goes for a lot of different things. And shoot, I'm guilty of this just as anybody else is that we are so afraid to suck at something that we just decide not to start. <laughs> or yeah. I don't want to try it. It's like, God, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Maybe it's not for me. It's like, no, just figure it out. Like you have to just get out there. It's called success for a reason. And the reason is you have to suck before you get the success. Right? You can't spell it without the other. I always explain that to my athletes all the time. It's like, well, I'm bad at this. I'm like, yes, you have to suck at this first, and then you will get better at it. And the reason is, is that to get better at something requires so much work and trial and error and faults and fails to get there, is that you have to go through that to make sure you really, really want to be successful. Right? Nobody wants to do this. Nobody wants to suck. Everybody wants to be good. But there's a different, and that what that what separates good from who 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 was that person that was here three years ago? I forgot yeah. their name. Yeah, like yeah. you just got to go through it. Yeah. yeah, and the nice thing is this is that there's always a safety net. The vast majority of the people that are coming to your gym, they want to get a workout. So did they get a workout? Yeah, they're probably breathing hard. They're probably, I mean, maybe they were breathing too hard. Maybe they had to move too much weight. But at least they got the workout, you know, and um. I think what's important is that we, we talk about why all the time. We, we talk about we're looking at, at, at different competitions. What's the why for their program? I think you need to have the <coughs> you need to have the exact same why yeah. when you design your workout. Why am I putting these in here? Why is it that many? Why is it that long? Why is it that short? Yeah. And so when I look at so here's my concern about outsourcing programming. Those people, for the same reason why I like in-house doing it myself, is the people doing that programming have no idea who you are, have no idea who your membership care is, and they don't care. Like, they're just putting it out there. And for the same reason, we all have our own personal biases when we do any type of programming, whether it's competitive, individual, or group training or self, is it's the lens and the landscape of which you know in front of your face also dictates how you program. For example, I know, and I'm not going to say it by name, is, but you could probably figure it out. I know I've seen very popular affiliate programming that program as if everybody has their affiliate that they're programming from. Like, <laughs> all the bikes in like they just it doesn't fit 90 percent of the affiliates that are getting this programming and you see this program come out and i've seen it in multiple different ones I, i've been privy to like six or seven different ones and you can tell who's programming based off the gym that they work out at <laughs> it's like 100 yeah program a workout that has three different weight bar, bar weighted barbells i'm like who can do that in an affiliate Right. Like, right. what is this? And that's the, that's the danger and pitfall when it comes to that. And this, kind of, this goes into the question that Rich had, and this is actually a great question, and you were talking about this earlier, is thoughts on a hybrid model, taking an individual program, ex Mayhem Compete, as your template, and then tailing the workout slash progressions, rep changes to better suit their athletes. Yes, in a sense of I would prefer that than just taking someone else's programming and giving it to your membership base, right? So for example, I mean, they mentioned Mayhem. If you were to just take Mayhem programming as a templated inspiration and then change it and modify it to fit the equipment that you have, the space you have available, the membership that you have, I would wholeheartedly encourage that because that's actually how you learn right? You get a base. It's really hard to paint a white blank canvas. It's a lot easier to maybe look at a picture and then try to transfer that over with whatever you like to do, right? I will always encourage people to do that way more than just cut and paste from someone that you don't even know, right? And it's a great way to learn. It's a, it's a better way for you to understand your clients because now you start thinking about them. It's like, all right, there's a lot of rope climbs in here, but it's like, well, we don't really do that here. We usually save that for a Saturday. Maybe I'll move this to the weekend. And, you know, we got this group that usually comes in on Tuesdays. So let's, 
Like you, you're, then it starts teaching you how to think about your members mm -hmm. and the space and the equipment and the time frame at which you operate your class times. Uh, and, and I would prefer that over just taking what they do and putting it in and like, hopefully it works for everybody. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's great. And what, what you said, um, as far as modifying based, especially on the equipment and the time frame where you're going to put certain, you know, types of workouts or whatever. Um, I don't like to, and let me, uh, I want to know your thoughts on this. Cause I think it's, it's important to know. We talk about, you shouldn't program to your population, but how do you program based on knowing your gym? And I think that one of the things, like you mentioned, was definitely equipment. And yeah. you don't need to be a gym that has a whole fleet of 25 assault bikes right. to get a lot of good programming in. I mean, it's fun to use, but that's, I mean, in all reality, it's a, that's a very easy thing to to use. And I think a lot of gyms that have a lot of bikes like that, they they tend to just like default to the bike. They like throw just throw them on the bike, kind of a deal. <laughs> yeah. Rather than thinking like, okay, what are the ways can I get that same response? Mm -hmm. You know, something hard, something fast, a lot yeah. of power driven, whatever. Um, and then I, I just we had a drop in actually this morning that said, you know, it's really weird. I, I my old gym never did rope climbs and the the gym that i go to now it's i feel like we do rope climbs like every week i go did you ask them why mm -hmm. she's like well no i just they usually say usually the answer is well you know you should you should want to do the things you suck at and i go well i go that's like <laughs> saying that the crossfit games was always programmed perfect because <laughs> matt and tia won i go that that's not an right. answer I go, but, but ask them ask them why it's important i go i'll tell you why we do ropes and where it fits and how it fits and why it fits um but I think that it's important to not shy away from same thing. And you've said this before too. There are gyms that never pro program ring muscle ups because they don't have anyone that could do ring muscle ups. Mm -hmm. Should it still be programmed? I mean, maybe somebody wants to try to do ring muscle ups sometime and they won't know unless that carrot put out there. Yes. So you don't want to ever low bar your population ever. Yes. You correct. program to the best, right. modify for the rest. And if you are if you are deciding that you're going to program for the best person in your gym, then you better go above that person because mm -hmm. they will invariably hit it. And you want everyone else following them as well. Yeah. So go above that. You know, put it put that bar up. I I am a fan of a high bar. I just uh, I, yeah. I, I really now now it's a very good clarification because it's not like hey lower the programming to your membership right. base. It's lower it to where you want them to reach for. Right. Right. Yes. Right. It, but I a lot of that is actually this is. Uh, in this question, uh, Chelsea says, what is the most common problem you guys see now before I, th before I think it was over programming for a class, in my opinion, that's it. That's the number one. That is by far the number one thing I see now and how we swing back to this constant volume chasing over programming. And this is the problem that I see with most all affiliate programs is that they program so much shit because they don't have a class to run with it. Yeah. They're like, do it. It's like they cram 90 minutes of appropriate stuff and put it into 60. Like this is the, the biggest problem I have. And the fallout of this problem is this phrase I'm tired of hearing too is, well, if we just programmed one workout for the day, everyone would get bored or ask me if this is all we're doing. I'm like, that's a you problem. Right. Like if your workout is, let's just say the classic time frame for CrossFit is somewhere between 12 to 15 minutes. Your workout's 12 to 15 minutes. Shit, let's just say 20 minutes. For those 40 extra minutes, you should be coaching their asses off and teaching them how to do things. If anybody is standing around in your gym, even if it's for a five-minute workout, bored, you are doing something wrong. Like, if it's five minutes, guess what? Our warm up is going to be a, a borderline chill workout right, because right. we got to prep you because of the intensity that we're about to dance on you with. Or maybe there's squat snatches in it. We're going to spend 10 to 15 minutes in working up to the appropriate weight for the number of reps we have at the weight that we have programmed. Like, you, there's no time that you should be bored in a class unless you're just doing a bad job coaching. Well, and the well, problem is, is everybody, sorry, everybody's so afraid 
or or so bad at coaching is that they mask it with just making people do a bunch of shit. Hey, here's a 10 minute warm up. It's on the board. Do it. Great. Now get your warm up weight set and do this three rounder for for warm up. Cool. All right, here's the workout. Nice. Good job, everybody. Put that away. Let's get the rowers out. And here's our conditioning piece. And like you've done nothing but tell people to start and stop for an hour. Yep. yep. Traffic cop. Tra- exactly. The lifeguard of the gym. Yeah. And the funny thing about saying lifeguard is like we're, we're talking about improving people's lives and saving them with health and fitness. You're actually doing the opposite. Right. <laughs> you're going to burn them out. You're going to run them out. You're going to get them hurt. You're not going to teach them. There's no, there is no time to teach in a lot of these outsourced affiliate programming that I've seen and analyzed myself. It's just there, there, there's only time to get that and do this. That's it. Yeah. 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 And the, it's interesting. I think that's, they're trying to make that be the selling point. Look at everything you get. Yeah. And a, a, a templated, a templated program is not making you a better coach because you have more things to say or more things to point to. Um, I mean, you know that we, we always do two parts generally, not, not every single day, but most of the days we'll do two parts. Um, some sort of a strength piece, some sort of a conditioning piece, whatever. But, um, we always have the first, so if you break up an hour, we have the first 30 minutes is warm up our, our, the warm up that we do together, the mobility that we do together. We spend a good amount of time on mobility and then the progressionary work of the pieces that we're going to be doing. I mean, if we're talking air squats, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on air squats. We'll say, Hey, this is what it looks like. And generally, you know, I'll look at my class to see who we have. And I'll make sure that everyone's moving and I'll know if someone isn't moving, I'll know why they're not moving. There better be a reason why other than just being lazy or whatever. (laughs) Um, Or if it's like, okay, we're going to be working on the snatch, then we'll go through our progression of trying to get that. And it's like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of just that one movement, trying to get it all in before we get into the actual workout. And it's, I like, I mean, you know, a lot of times you just kind of do what you do. And I like Mm -hmm. when we have drop-ins that come in and they're like, wow, you guys spend a lot of time on, the 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 mobility piece and the you know doing all the barbell work and like the progression stuff and still have time to get whatever in and i mean and that's what i do as a program is i'm looking at not just a workout and that's what that's what i was talking about with dot com dot com doesn't have time constraints right at all like right. they're, they're not equipment it's going to be like go get on your bike and ride 20 miles are you going to do that in the gym mm-hmm. you know you can't go swim in the gym but you know, so when I'm looking at the gym programming, it is, I have an hour's block and I, I kind of feel like an hour, hour and 10 minutes ish, somewhere in there, um, that I choose to work with. And that's, that is part of the programming because I got to know how long I'm going, how long yeah. do I have to work with? Right. You know, what kind of clay do I have to build my statue? Um, you know, am I going to try and just shove it all into a, you know, into a box or am I going to try and make it to where, okay, I know that people can get, if I'm going to have two pieces, they got to be able to get what I want out of them on those two pieces. It's mm-hmm. not about checking the boxes for two pieces. Are they working whatever level of strength that we're, that we're trying to work at a particular intensity that I want them to hit at? Yeah. Um, and then what are we doing on the workout? And usually like if we do a longer one, if it's 20 minutes to 25 minutes, and then it's obviously just one piece. And it, the, when we're doing two pieces, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's definitely like 12, it's no more than 15 minutes yeah. at all. Um, because I want to make sure that they get the, the intended stimulus out of that, you know? So there's a lot of pieces that are good that go into that. And it's great when these other programs will at least put some time frames on there mm-hmm. and you got to practice those time frames because they don't always work. Yeah. They don't always work. No, I mean, shoot, you'd be like, oh, well, this is weight going way further than longer than I thought it was, or it was too short. I mean, I've, I've programmed a workout. I was like, oh, wow, that was nowhere near as hard as I had pictured it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Totally. In my head. But, um, yeah, so I, I, the big thing here is that I, I see a lot of these affiliate programming networks just leaning into volume. Yeah, totally. because that's what people want. And it's like, since when did that matter? 
since since when did we cater to what anybody wa- wanted in our gym? Like we want to get you your goals, but right, there's right. difference. There's I swear to God, I'm going to write a children's book one day and just, for parenting, just called Wants and Needs. <laughs> yeah. Kids need everything. Dad, I need that. I need it. I was like, no, you want that. Yeah. There's a difference, yeah. right? Here's what you need. Mark, who just walked into my gym, I was like, you need to lose 50 pounds and you need to spend some time on your mobility, especially in your ankles and shoulders. You don't, you want all of these things and you want to be entertained because you heard, you know, it's like, oh, cross it'll get me there. It's like, what you need is these certain things. And if you do all the things that you want, you're not going to get there. Because if you overtrain for the next six weeks because you just started deconditioned and poor mobility, you're going to get hurt getting what you want. Right? We know what you need. And that's that is the that is the most important part about programming for your affiliate is that you need to understand what every single individual in your affiliate needs. And you mask that with giving them what they think they want. Yeah, totally. It's you a want free this sock or this sock? Card. I already picked it for you, but exactly. I don't care which one of these you get. Yeah, totally. I mean, oh, there, great gonna, decision. Gonna, You're growing. Gonna, You're getting so old and grown up I'm going to pull the curtain back a little bit at the level one programming lecture, but those of you guys that think you picked what the workout was, no. Like, <laughs> like, like all right, guys, we're going to run in a row. And it was like, row, my like, cool run. <laughs> Cause I already designed this at lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you don't know what you're doing. I do. <laughs> and I do that with my children. Dad, I, I need that. No, you want it. There's a difference. Right? Everybody yeah, yeah. wants volume. It's ridiculous. And that's why it's so important. So if you don't program individually for your gym, whether you're afraid, you don't think you're ready, you, like, fine. Then at least follow something that has a good base for programming and start to either watch it for six weeks and maybe you just watch, watch how your members do these workouts and you start to figure out what they're capable of. And then after six weeks, I was like, all right, I noticed everybody who's struggling with chest bar pull-ups. This one has a lot. There's 100. Maybe let's back it off to 75, uh, spend about five more minutes working on technique in the warm-up and then you start, then for the, for the next six weeks, you tinker. Then you're in, you're, it's three months of what? Three months, 30 days times? 90. Like, yeah, 90. So you got 80 to 90 workouts-ish in of eyeballs. I'm just like, all right, now I'm going to, you know, maybe you, all you do for a year is tailor something to your affiliate. Great. Right? But the best thing you can do is something that is tailored for your members not catered to as bill was saying earlier but tailored to yeah Yeah. right man and it's i just think it's so important um i I saw something uh it was a clip a while back that i don't know if it was the crossfoot the crossfit book or if it was something it was glassman he was talking about uh brendan gilliam where he was asking about uh you know, tell me about this. When he was talking to Brendan, he's like, tell me about this person. You know, what's their kid's name? Where, where do they, where do they work? Where do they this? Where do they that? And talking about that, that relationship. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that piece is where you hide the mechanics of the programming. I now know that this person has an issue with squatting or, uh, for whatever reason they, they fell, they went on a ski trip. They went this, they went that. So I know what the workout's going to be. I know what it's supposed to feel like. I now know what I can give that person mm-hmm. because I know what this, I know what the intended stimulus is supposed to be. So instead of just going, okay, you can't do squats. Are right, you just going to do sit-ups? Well, no, I, I know what it's supposed to be because right. it's mine. And so I can really help you out. Now, granted, if you're the head coach and you're not coaching the majority of the classes, not everyone is going to have the same feeling about that you are, but that's kind of where you can kind of disseminate that stuff out. Unless you have, I mean, like, it's nice when you have coaches that have been around you and your program for a while. They've done it. They know what it feels like. They've coached yeah. it. They've been you know, like, scale like, it, modify yeah, it. They, they get it. So that, that saves a lot of time and energy. Uh, but that, I mean, that's, that's where you learn. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't personally, I would not tell people 
whatever programming that you're doing or not doing. Because the second you say, oh, we're going to change to this, whatever the this is. Right. Everyone's going to be like, well, I think that that's dumb that we had to do. And this is stupid. They don't feel like it's theirs. Exactly. Give them theirs. Nailed it. So like it. The, the officers will know what's up. You guys just do your thing. Yeah. You coach it like you coach it. Here's the workout. Here's the, I mean, whatever, however you guys do your thing. But you, you, you put your spread on it and feed it to everybody. Mm -hmm. And then they think it's yours. And then, but you still watch them, see how they're learning, see how they're moving. What can they do? What can't they do? How do they respond? How was it on you as a coach? Can your coaching staff take care of whatever the stuff is that you're wanting to get done in that amount of time? Do yeah. they need more cues or not enough cues? Or uh, is the time frame right for whatever you're trying to do? I mean, there's a lot of things to look at while you're doing that. Yeah. Um, but that's the fun part, man. That's the, that's the finger painting part of programming. Yes. It is the fun part. <clears throat> uh, Nivy, goal number one for 2024, get that level three. Yeah. Experience. Let's fucking go. Yes. All right. So coaching and education. I want to talk about CAP one more time and just say is that I think, I realize I'm wearing a CrossFit hat right now. I think CAP is probably is the best for affiliates because it's programmed by people from CrossFit for CrossFit affiliates exclusively along with everything else. And it's, it's always funny to me. Like, is it the sexiest stuff in the world? It's like, no, but it works. It's never been the sexiest. That's never what's been, so funny about it. It's never been the sexiest. I told you like first time I saw that com was like seven by three deadlift. And I was like, this is the dumbest workout I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is before I knew a shitty deadlifts. It's the it coach deadlifts. that makes it sexy. Exactly. It's the yeah. coaching that makes, and, and here's the funniest part. I, I, I've always laughed at this is that people who want to open gyms come to CrossFit to become affiliates because they know it's the best product out there. People that want to become great coaches come to CrossFit to get the level one, level two, level three, and level four because they trust CrossFit to make us the best coaches in the world. Why wouldn't you trust CrossFit's programming for affiliates <laughs> in the same level as you do the other things. All right? So what I wanted to do is give everybody a peek behind the curtain of cap and why for Nivy specifically, not just you, but why cap helps people improve their coaching abilities and, and, and knowledge base. So <clears throat> let's see. This is, I think this is Saturday's. What is today? Is today Thursday? Yeah. Do you know, let's all track of time. Yeah. Okay. This is Saturday's. Yeah. This has been a weird where Christmas lies. and Totally. <laughs> so, all right. The workout of the day is four four-minute AMRAPs, three hang power cleans at 95 and 135. The weights are already great. I'm glad I didn't see 85 in there. Six <laughs> shoulder to overhead, nine lateral burpees over the bar, and 12 pull-ups. Three, six, nine, 12. Numbers are going up. Hang power clean, shoulder overhead, lateral burpee, pull-up. So you've got pulling on the back end, ones with the bar, ones in gymnastics. And then you've got pushing in the middle, ones with the bar, ones in gymnastics. And you loop through that for four minutes, take a two-minute break, and do that four times. That's 16. That's about 20 to 22 minutes for the workout. All right. And this is where I really like this. You have intermediate beginner. I'm not a big fan of just like, hey, if you can't do it all RX, you're intermediate or you're a beginner. But what I like about this, if I'm a coach, is I say, okay, I know who's intermediate and I know who's beginner. So when I'm starting to think of like, what weight should I give them or have them try? It's right there. Start there. It just, right? They just want to give you a place to start. All right, I'll make the first brush stroke on your canvas and you take it from there. Because sometimes the hardest thing is like, where do I put the paintbrush? Yep. What color do I use first? Where do I put, like, and, and that's what I like about this. Below that, this is arguably the most important part of the whole class, the whiteboard. All right, everybody come to the whiteboard. We're going to talk about what the workout is, why we're doing it, and how you're going to, about to have a successful day. And it shows you the intended stimulus. So the coaches that maybe are new, or don't understand all the nuances of programming and why we're doing it and what this whole workout's for, it's written right there for you. Two plus rounds each AMRAP, unbroken hang power cleans and shoulder overhead is the big goal. One to two sets on the pull-ups. And it's like, all right, one to two sets. Shoot, if it's one to two sets, like I, I'm not going seven and five. 
I just don't have that pull-up volume. Maybe I need to lower the pull-up volume to get this in two sets. I can usually do three or four at a time. So if I do that twice, maybe I should do seven. Boom, right? You, and then coaching goals. These are for all your coaches. By the way, if you guys are affiliate owners, your coaches have access to this. If you just plug their emails in, they can look at this all they want. And then you have a four-minute video going over the whole thing. And all you could really do is like, I'm just going to take that video and just repurpose it for my class. <laughs> right? Scaling. All right. Ways to scale hang power cleans. You can scale the weight or you can scale the movement as far as the piece of equipment you use. And it says dumbbells. Kettlebells are another option in there. Overviews of things to look for. It has all that. Logistics to think about. All right. Partner options. Workout briefs, time frames are in there, all in space walls. Yeah. Space walls. Time frames are in there. Video resources of every movement being programmed is in there. And then below that, I'm not a huge like detailed guy when it comes to my class, but I've also been doing this for 15 years, so I, I, I've got it a little bit figured out. But it's okay. Whiteboard talk should only take about four to five minutes. Here's a general warm-up for the class based off this workout. Here's a dynamic workout warm-up based off this workout. Here's a specific warm-up based off the movements in this workout. Here's all the progressions for each movement for this particular <laughs> workout, including the pull-up and the push press and the shoulder overhead. Here's a mini round, get prep set, do we take a break, and now we're going. Oh, and here's all the things your coaches should be looking for the entire time they're watching their athletes work out, including what to look for and how to fix it with what to look for and cues. And you're going to tell me you can't benefit from all of this information that they give you every single day? And that's if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't program specifically for your affiliate. But at the end of the day, I still come here for inspiration when I've got a little writer's block. We all have that. I go to dot .com, I come to CAP, and I look at a bunch of things on the internet. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of shit, dude. It's a lot of stuff. And I don't think people truly appreciate the amount of stuff that is in here for affiliate owners and specifically coaches. And it's a great place to start on your programming journey, if you want to become a better programmer or a better coach or a better cure, if you're going to take your level two, it, it's, you can't get better information than here. What to look for in cues. Practice it every day. The level three is more information. Level four, you better spend some time in here. Yeah. <laughs> because this is the level four. This is the level four. If anybody wants to take, this is it. They watch your whiteboard talk and how you talk about what the workout is. Do you know what the stimulus is? Do you know your progressions? Can you look for these certain things with these certain movements? Can you teach them? Can you cue them? Can you do this in real time? Like this is the, this is the level four. You want to pass level four, you should be looking at this every day. And that's my pitch. <laughs> that's, my, that's my pitch for just, just if you, if, for those that ask us, how do we get better at programming? If you coach in an affiliate, you have access to this. You just got to ask your affiliate owner to give it to you. And it's free. Free, sort of. It's part of your affiliate fee. You technically get paid for it. Right. <laughs> and, and if you don't program yourself, modify programming from someone else for your affiliate base. And the last thing I would ever suggest is just follow someone's stuff blindly. Oh, man. I would, I would never suggest that. Even, even though it's easy to do, oh, it saves me time. Your, your your people, your 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 clients are paying you to improve their life, right? And literally, they are paying you to do what if 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 you aren't giving them anything, and you're saying three, two, one, go, they should be paying zero and doing dot com for free, right? I mean, shit, I did dot com for free when I worked out at the regular gym. I've done more dot com in 2023 than I have in probably, yeah, 15 years combined. Just because of, <laughs> I uh, had a few more years on it than you did. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably not the case, but I've definitely have done it a lot, at least in the last decade for sure. Oh, but, dude, without um, a doubt. Yeah. Well, there was no, I mean, you were busy doing your programming. You know, I mean, over the mm -hmm. over the last 
10 years of you having your affiliate. So yeah. there wasn't a reason to do, I mean, you look at dot com, we'd look at dot com, but we wouldn't yeah. necessarily do dot com. No, but I'd scroll through it and be like, oh, I like that movement combo. Yeah. Or that rep scheme or that time frame. Yeah. Uh, all constantly. See, and that's, that's what I really like about and especially for the newer programmer with cap, it gives you not just the, Oh, here's a cool little mm -hmm. mix of, of, of things for a workout. It tells you why they put those ingredients together. Yes. It's like watching one of those like British baking shows where they tell you, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the reason yeah. I put the little sprinkle of it, and it's not a big sprinkle, it's a little sprinkle because if you put too much, you put the, I mean, it gives you all of the reasoning for that. And mm -hmm. that's how you learn. It isn't just this because Dude. I I put these together and it's good. Like, look at this. Now, it. You gotta have it, all. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It says, all right. Um, yeah, here's the barbell progression for it. There was hang power cleans and push jerks as part of this. Eight hang power cleans. Lean forward in front of the bar, jump and squeeze the glutes, and shrug the bar up to the shoulder. Like, great. Push press, keeping the heels pushed into the floor, pull the hips straight down, and then stand and press quickly. Eight jump and lands with no barbell. Jump off the ground, squeeze the glutes while in the air, and land. Push jerks, jump and squeeze the glute, then punch and land with straight arms. Like it just gives you these things, plus a little warm up and how to add load. And uh, Doctor Evil just nailed this. This is actually a great suggestion. Is okay. Say you get cap. Look at the workout, and then before you look at all the information, write out what you think a good warm up, dynamic warm up, progressive, you know, specific warm up would be scales and whatnot and then go down and see what they get and then right like train your brain right right to do that and yeah, yeah. i think uh i think looking at that initially like we said six weeks just look at it every day and then try that okay i think i've I've gotten some cues. I'm starting to remember what good scaling and modifications are. These warm ups and progressions. Every time we do push jerks, we work on you know strict press, push press, push jerk. Sometimes we do it with an empty barbell, and then we add weight as we like. You start to just get into these cool rhythms, and then the the fun part is once you figure that out, coaching becomes more fun. Oh, dude, it's so it, fluid. It it's exactly, and I don't want to say effortless because it just it is. You're on right. It is exhausting. But you're just wheeling, man. You're just wheeling and dealing instead of like, oh, I wonder if this is right. And you're like, okay, okay, grab your bar. All right, let's just do some, like loosen up, some strict press, work that bar path. Make sure you get that chin out of the way. Keep your tummy tight. All right, let's add that dip. All right, dip drive overhead. That's that push press. Now we're going to drive hard and land, right? We're going to get off the ground for the push jerk. Make sure you guys land with your elbows locked out. Hold that bottom position just so you, and then stand up all the way. And now you just know and you're just doing it. Dude, it's so fun. You get like the main, my favorite is like, <clears throat> you get the main group movement, just like what you're talking about. Yeah. But then you see your one or two or three kind of that they like, they're just not able to get. So you kind of get everybody going that. and then you kind of zero and pop, pop, pop. Yeah. And you come back to the wide view again. And then you see something, you, I mean, cause you'll see those things out of the corner of your eye. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, like, that's why to me, like it's, it's so lifeguarding. I mean, like it's so yeah. peripheral, like everything. Like you just have this yeah. massive 180 degree view. See, it's like blip, and you're like, "What's that?" Oh, you're like, "Boom!" Well, let me see that one more time. Uh, you know, uh, one. butt up a little higher on that. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So being able to be like that in and out yeah. and in, like to me, that's so fun. Like once they get going in the workout, it's like, well, okay. I mean, you can come around, you can see see people, right. and you can kind of help when they're doing the stuff. But that point, like, it's like your job's done. Right they, now, they, it's just they, about now. You're now you're like, woo! Here we go, guys. Yeah, yeah, then you, you are lifeguard. It. Yeah, like, hey, <laughs> what you would love to do, and this is where I can't stand seeing this happen in coaching, is that because you didn't give your athletes enough coaching in the warm up, you are now going to waste their time in the workout because uh -huh. you have to stop them and show them. I was like, you know what's not boring? Being coached. Yeah. <laughs> in the warm up. All right, guys. Five strict press. Push through. Hey, might get your chin back and then like yeah, three yeah. other people do it because they know they were probably exactly. That's why I say it out loud. You're right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, dip forward. Hey, Sarah, don't dip forward so much. You're coming up on your toes. When you guys dip, just jam your heels down hard, drive through, squeeze your quads and your glutes to finish the press. All right, nice. 
And then you like you you put all that, and this is my favorite part about coaching. You put all that effort into the warm up, so that when it's workout time, it's like Sarah, what did I say about your toes? Like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Instead of like, hey Sarah, put the bar down. Let me show you how to do a push press. <laughs> I know now, now you're not breathing. I know you were just getting a great workout, but now we're gonna stop that two minutes in. Right, two and minutes just in this ruin your whole workout. <laughs> oh, whole reason you wanted to come here was to sweat. Now you don't get any of that. Oh, Judy, this is not a dumb question. This is a very important question. Dumb question. Who has access to this? Anyone with an L1 or only affiliate owners? As far as CAP is concerned, only affiliate owners have access to CAP. But if you are a coach with a level one or even a member with your level one, they can basically add you to their team via email it send you a link, and then you would have full access to this as well. Because whether they're coaching or not, we don't know. Because, I, I mean, I had plenty of people in my affiliate that just wanted to get their level one and never wanted to coach. Yeah. But more often than not, once they went to the level one, they came back and you're like, you know, I kind of want to start coaching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally. Just maybe a couple of classes. A couple of classes. And that's where I would start getting my athletes to cut their teeth on programming themselves. I was like, hey, look, you knew. Coach the Saturday workout, right? We had the free 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. free Saturday workout. I'll let you program it. Run it by me first. I'm like, Mike, this is two hours long. <laughs> You're doing 600 sit-ups. <laughs> but yes, that, that's where you go. Um, all right. That's awesome. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Long story short, Always learn. Learn. Yes, please. Learn. learn. Take the time. Love to learn. Gotta oh. love to learn. Yes. And it's, look, it's hard. It's hard at first, but bam, once you're in it, like you get in that flow state in the coach coaching class, dude, it's so fun. And then it makes the workout fun because then instead of like, military drilling people while they are working out and they're already half brain dead to begin with because they're tired. I just have fun with them. Yeah. Right. Like someone does a snatch and drops and I'm like, Mark, what the fuck was that? Cause I don't know, man. I was like, lock your elbows out, turn your wrists over. We just, we just went over that. And then, and then you, that's all you have to say because you set it in warm up. Yep. I'm bored because I didn't get six workouts in my hour. Like, yeah, but I bet you still don't know how to do a pull up the right way. Remember, uh, like, uh, if you take any like the lifting class, like CrossFit lifting classes, or even like if you do a like an on ramp or whatever, and all you do is the entire classes with the well, even the level one. People do this in level one, where you don't touch a weight, yes. and everyone walks out the next day they're like, "Dude, my legs are so sore. So, my shoulders are so you know, All we use is a PVC pipe, and I can't move." <laughs> Yeah. That first breakout group in the level one when it's just squats. Yes. Yeah. You put a PVC pipe in someone's hand and you make them do a front squat and it's the hardest thing. They and ever they're quivering. <laughs> <laughs> it's either like, they just look like a, like a, a fuzz ball because they're quivering so hard. I was such a dick with that too. I was like, and down? <laughs> and I just like hold them there for 15 seconds. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's, you know, if you're trying to fill time, like that's a very easy way to fill time where people are getting a, the workout or a mm -hmm. workout without it being an on the board written workout. It's right. your warm up for that workout. Right. That's cool. It's like if you went to the track for an hour session, you have a main workout, right? Or, or just like look at any sport you ever play that involves some sort of like, training and skill development right? like wrestling i know we we're talking about this uh yeah <laughs> earlier <laughs> wrestling there's a lot of warm-up and prep a lot it could be like hand position head position right like new techniques whether it's rolls or throws or you know slips and then it, then it's like all right now we're going to get more specific and then we're just going to like spar or what do you, do you guys call it sparring no we do with live wrestling wrestle? yeah. yeah live wrestle for 20 minutes and you're going to rotate partners every three minutes. Like, yeah, all that's teaching. And then when you're doing the live wrestling, you are implementing the skills you practice in warm up in the actual application. And then your coach might come by and it's like, we just worked on this. Or you're like, you're getting fucking mangled. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you just slipped your elbow or your wrist under here, you'd actually be able to get out of this. Yeah, it's crazy. You would have a 
you know, hour and a half, two hour practice. And the actual live wrestling part would maybe be like a, a 20 minute segment. Not that you're wrestling for straight for 20 minutes, but it would be like about a 20 minute time frame where you're working in and out. But the rest of the time, you're right. It's like calisthenic stuff and you're doing some jogging stuff and you're doing some roll stuff and you're stretching out and then you're doing drills and then you're doing technique and then you're you're going at this percentage and then you're going to do some other things. And it's like, okay, now you throw your headgear on. Now you go, now you bang for a little while. Yeah. And you come out and then it's like, all right, now we're going to do some sprints and then we'll do some rope climbs and then we'll do, you know, but like the actual wrestling part, Right, like it's a it's a percentage of Sp like small. Yeah, it is, it's not sustainable, and that's what we're talking about. People like this. Oh, you want to know what's crazy? Real fast. Like, hey, I want to wrestle for an hour straight, and I Dude, think you're not going to make me a better wrestler. I was just talking about this uh, with one of my members. He wrestled with me, at Cal Poly, and and we do stuff with Cal Poly, and we talk He's about like how you guys wrestle together. Yeah, yeah, he was that's on my team. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we talk about, I, I have a very different perception now on what would be best for an athlete with like my CrossFit knowledge of, of, of training, I think for, for more than anything else. And, and we, I see it in everything. I see baseball players that all they want to do is throw, 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 and hit, 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 football players that all want to do the exact same thing. Wrestlers that only want to just get in there and wrestle. And you, you have, the more you're doing, it's kind of like the, the old Romanov like running thing where the more time you're actually on the ground, you are increasing your chance for injury. Mm. The more time you're actually like for wrestlers, the more time you're actually physically live full 100% live wrestling, you are increasing your chances of, of injury. The more you are doing live, you know, hits when you're when you're playing football, the more chance you have of injury. So it's like even even like weightlifters, they don't lift one rep maxes all the time because that's where nearly ever on every ever. right. So you never want to be like you want to be able to train so your body is ready to go at a particular percentage to like get after it. Yeah. So you want to train the engine, but it doesn't mean that you want to do the exact same thing. So here we are doing CrossFit workouts. You don't need to have one hour's worth of all Metcons and all out, you know, Fran attacks for the whole time because it's going to crush it. Uh, it's just really interesting. It's really interesting. Like yeah. really like being able to understand that, you know, and having it make sense. So you're saying intensity is the, is the most important part. Oh, yes. Outside of skill development and practice and training and learning how to do the list before lifting heavy. That's what's just going to happen. That's where you learn, right? Yep. But volume will not get you there. No. It's a fast track to get hurt. It's a fast track to get burned out. And it's a fast track to lose. I would say this. It's the fastest track for your members to lose touch with the coaches and community because there's no time to develop that. Like the greatest relationships I have were forged in the coaching. Yeah. yeah. Someone entrusted you to teach them how to do something, not tell you how to do something, teach you how to do something. You teach someone how to do something and they'll be indebted to you for the rest of their life. That's a bit hyperbolic, but you get what I'm saying. You tell them what to do all the time. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And I'm like, fuck, okay. We're, we're out of 45s. <laughs> <laughs> but you teach them how. You, you teach them how, and then you watch it work, and then, poof, the byproduct being the community that you develop. Yep. Byproduct. Not selling point. But that was a whole other topic of conversation. All right. That was a good one, dude, for right after Christmas. That's a fucking gift. Yeah. Yeah, you that guys are good. good. Opens around the good. corner. Open is around the corner. I right saw right. Like Fuck, dude. Is there something like that? Huh? Like 60 days or I don't know. Yeah, I thought that was closer than that. Uh, maybe it is closer. <laughs> <laughs> the number is not ready is my number. <laughs> not ready. I'm, I'm almost there. I'm like 95% back. I did a handstand walk yesterday. Damn, dude. That's good. I got about 10 feet. Because <laughs> it, it hurt or just because of the balance? Balance, fear, everything. Uh, yeah, I did yeah. one handstand push-up. It took about 10 seconds. <laughs> Just, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Someone pays attention. I'm assuming it's a joke from, uh, you know, if you want to learn how to do anything, go to TikTok. Yep. 
It's a very credible source. Uh, all right, team. Happy, what is it, Thursday? It is Thursday. Happy Thursday, Bill. Sir. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, dude. And happy New Year. We got some questions. New Year. I'm super pumped. Um, the gear from OG Culture. If you guys haven't seen, 63 days. Thank you, Paulina. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's time, but it's not enough time. No, it never is. It never is. It never is. But uh, 63 days. Oh, yes. Nah. <laughs> not in 63 days, man. Not in 63 days. Like, <laughs> front racking a barbell is still... So actually, I would say front racking a bar is the hardest thing for me still. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I tore it doing it. And so that how tight it uh, is I can see that. back yeah. of my shoulder. Like, If you guys have bad front racks, it's not your wrists. It's your lats and your rotator cuffs and triceps. Like, It's everything behind the shoulder that's the problem. Mm. So we're not there yet. We're getting close. Getting close. All right, everyone. Hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year. We guys uh, will see you on the flip side. Yeah. See you in 2024. Uh, we're bringing the journal back. Don't you guys worry. Glassman Chipper will be back in full force uh, starting soon. We'll be getting back to our workouts of the weeks from Bill and I for all our Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for rolling with us there. And shoot, other than that, the more stuff you guys ask us, the more things we can answer. Hey, Zach, what do you miss? Uh, everything. But it's good to see you anyways. Bill, happy Not new that year. Much. Later. <laughs>